Welcome back to the Almost Friday podcast. Before we get into today's great episode with Willie Donellan, we'd like to talk to you about our sponsor, Cuervo. Have you heard of it? If you haven't, you probably live under a rock. And it probably stinks down there, okay? Take a shower, buddy. You gotta try Cuervo Tradicional. You know it's 100% agave tequila. Blows my mind every time I hear that. I wanna puke. Cuervo is the original tequila, and it's all about, as you know, we say a lot, fast forwarding friendships. That's how I got to know our guest today so well. We drank some Cuervo, and then by the end of the night, we'd been friends for 30 years. Yep. Cuervo introduced the world to tequila, and of course, the margarita. I was having a lot of margaritas down Cape Cod this week. I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I had a coconut margarita with Cuervo in it, and I had a spicy margarita with Cuervo in it. I like the coconut more, but the spicy was also very good. Thank you so much, Cuervo. Thank you. Go enjoy a high energy night with Cuervo. Try to see uh... Another word from our sponsor, AG1, a nutritional supplement that is amazing, okay? It's, it's on my morning ritual. I drink it every single morning. It's so awesome. Try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash almost Friday. That's drinkag1.com slash all caps almost Friday. And another word from one of our sponsors, Tushy Liam. Stop wiping and start washing. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash almost Friday and use promo code almost Friday for 10% off your first order. That's hellotushy.com slash almost Friday for 10% off. Thank you. Let's get into the episode. This is, we're on the, we've been on the pod for two minutes. No, I, no. <laughs> we've been on the pod. I just clap. No, you have to Yeah, restart. but you can still line up the clap and stuff <laughs> I know, I know, after. but like, I just restart. No, we're good. We're good. We're good. We're good. We started. Let me read one of your fucking songs. <laughs> you can't read one of my songs. Come on. That is the one part of my creative output that I refuse to let. I bet, it's not, I bet, I bet creative is a strong word for those. Wait, letters. but like, but you make them into songs, and then or do you keep the songs hidden in a little box, like a dragon hiding over his little treasure? What, do you, what does that mean? What, what do you mean in a box? Thing? Wait, what? That would, that but would that's how been. I feel when I'm writing yeah, videos. It's, it's the no, same with, fine, yeah. it's yeah. being, cr- like putting yourself out there is just... Yeah. yeah, you want you want to bully yourself before other people can bully you. Yeah. Wow. But that's why I don't want Whoa. you to see it, because it's, like, embarrassing. Whoa. I just <laughs> Come on. Figured, I just figured <laughs> That's <something> nothing. <laughs> Come on, we're friends. Let me... Let me uh... Okay, guys, welcome back to the Almost Shredded Podcast. Um, we have Willie Donnellan today. Whoa! Not in Not in Samoa. <laughs> what? It, but we call you Donnie. Yeah. You uh, asked us to call you Donnie. No, so why would like, it be Donnie if it's Donnell? I never asked for that. You got a... Uh, you got us all MAGA hats and said, if I buy these for you guys, will you call me Donnie? And I was like, I don't want to wear a MAGA hat. I don't support that guy. And I was pissed off. Speaking of which, you it's pretty bad day for you, his third indictment. Ooh, Did that yeah. happen today? Yeah, you're yeah, probably pissed. last night. Damn. Are you big are No you wonder big you're in such guy? a bad no, mood. I don't yeah. know why they're, they're doing he was in the, the No, no, no. Yes, you I used to work in like... You were in the Young Republican uh, Committee in BC. Yeah. BC you were there January 6th sniffing AOC's chair. Just say it. I... I, that's the yeah. That's the one thing you got right about my political agenda. Would, you want to touch? I would me. take a whiff that you, you were there at the storming the Capitol. I was not there. You'd wrap yeah. your. I was there when Trump got impeached, though. I worked in the Capitol building during the impeachment. You the worked in the Capitol building during the first impeachment. I worked. now you're here. Yeah, that's I, insane. I went to office every day at the yeah. You know, and you still the, couldn't. And you couldn't get into the Peace Corps. Yeah, yeah I couldn't so get into the Peace. Quick, Corps. quick refresher for everyone. Uh, wait, where's my camera? Where am I looking? You're looking there. What the fuck? We don't have a close up on you because fuck? Willie D is here and they won't get don't, us another you camera. You never tell Kala he doesn't have a close up. I know. <laughs> uh, You're going to lose him. Yeah, I'm totally lost now. Will Donnie, Trump supporter 408 on gmail.com, uh, was supposed to join the Peace Corps and go to Samoa because the age of consent there is 13. <laughs> <laughs> and, Christ. And then he couldn't come because they did a background check on him and they were like, You're a booze bag. And then they called this therapist. <laughs> Red flag, A, having a therapist as a guy. B, <laughs> B the, his therapist is like, yeah, he's at risk for just being an alcoholic. So it was, just, uh, <laughs> there were so many. That is, that is, a, that is, there are other factors. All right, enlighten I, us. Yeah. No, it was, it wasn't, the, it was that they, uh, yeah, they. I said I'd gone to therapy and that, that was part of like the mental health check. And so they had to get my therapist to fill out a form and they flagged like four different things that were wrong with my head. You that, know pilots can't have about. pilots can't have therapists? Is that true? Yeah. I told you that. Yeah. So is it just the fact that you had a therapist or It was if I had not had a therapist, I would be in Samoa right now. But I be- just feel like can I just ask uh, <laughs> Can I just ask like 
Are there that many people trying to be in Samoa and the Peace Corps that like they have to get rid of the one guy who just is trying to take care of his mental health? Um, no. Well, the crazy thing is I, I had already accepted the invitation. So it was like, like, it's not like someone filled my spot. Like I had spent three months thinking I was going and they told me I was going. I had done all the paperwork. I had done like all the like, like, background check. I had to go to the dentist. I had to get all my teeth fixed. I had to get like all this stuff done. And then at the very end, they were like, oh, you're a little. So it's just, they just have one less person because they pulled me right at the oh. end. It do was you think like those, three weeks before I was supposed to leave. They do you think those kids are just kind of sitting in an empty classroom wondering <laughs> yeah, when what, you're going to show up? Yeah, they know. Yeah. Was a 13 year old Samoan girl going? I thought. I can't. I, I, had I don't like the right way now. you said that. <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> I thought I had an appointment with Willie D. Yeah. Um, so how many people were supposed to be going or like are going now? I don't know. I think it's single digits that are in each like cohort or whatever. So, so like do you do it was I, competitive I imagine, to get in in the first place. I imagine everybody starts fucking pretty pretty uh pretty well. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Did you, so did you I think that is a thing. I genuinely do think that's yeah. Did you look into the roster before and you go, "She's mine." I did not. I she did will not. be mine. I did not. You, saw you would have. You saw I'm one of the. I have no doubt that you would have in my. Oh. I'm spoken for, dude. Uh, I did not though. But yeah, it was yeah. They were concerned about my mental health what for a number of reasons, not yeah. because I was a booze bag. But that was one of them. Yeah, I guess. What but, were the other three? Uh, I mean, yeah, the other three. I'm not going to list all my mental. Why disorders. not, dude? I, we you, do it every episode. Fucking come on. It, uh, not for this. I'm All right. Well, that, okay, what, what are your talking points, and what did you want to talk about on our podcast? <laughs> look, look at him squirm. I don't. You're... Replay, replay that squirm he had <laughs> 10 whoa, seconds whoa. ago. Slow-mo. Oh, uh, my God. Yeah. So it was a bummer, man. It was a big life-altering thing that was pretty sad. Well, it's bumming me out. Yeah. You cried? A little Aww. bit, yeah. Did you really? So can I just ask, like... Yeah. How did you? Can, are we like? Are you, are you able to be fully transparent? Can I ask some honest, brutal questions? Sure. Yeah. How did you like? Like, obviously, it was clear that you didn't want to do this and you wanted to do that. Yeah. So, how did you circle back and be like, "Hey, since I didn't make it, like, can I just come back?" I think it was after. How did you know you wanted to do content full time? <laughs> <laughs> I think it was. Well, he I... doesn't. Is the whole point? <laughs> I spent like two weeks. He didn't want to so much that he was going to move to Samoa. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> He's back. And then I spent two weeks. And like... then it's like, how did how did they, how do they just be like, all right, I guess you can come back. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, my mom was kind of confused about that too. Uh, no, it was like two weeks after. I spent like two weeks after I found out I wasn't going to Peace Corps, just looking at like regular jobs, like going back into politics or like other things. And it was just like every, it was just like in the back of my head every time it was like this is gonna be every day I'm there I'm gonna be like thinking like why didn't I just go try to make it? Well, that's everything you do. Yeah, anything you but do, this, you're gonna be. This thinking. is such a great. I mean, this is an amazing opportunity, and there there were th- there are definitely things I don't like about it that. But I'm just trying to be like it's like after, proactive about addressing those and making it. I think I can do it in a way that's healthy and makes me happy, but I wasn't before, and so I just I think I've learned from that, and I'm trying to do it in a better way. Well, I, I, I love that yet. answer. What's that? Love that answer. Yeah. I couldn't be happier to have you back. Yeah, it's exciting to be back. I miss you guys. Yeah, I, me too. I miss you very I've much. Had, I've had the. I, do. Uh, I miss you a lot. I love you very much. <laughs> and I think, you're prob- you. I think you're probably top. Uh, I'll give I'll give you top five smartest person in the office. I would even say top three. I was going to say that, but I don't want to. I don't want to. Are you that? Sm- where did you go to school? I went to Boston College. Okay. I don't know what their acceptance rate is. So, no, he's he's probably one of the smartest <laughs> dudes here. Um, Fry Beers has that effect like that nine eleven had, like it's my birthday. Little... Oh yeah, that's so fucking funny. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know how people just like were like, I'm joining the army after nine eleven. You go to Fry Beers and you're like, I'm joining the Peace Corps. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. This that's... was my nine eleven. Yeah. yeah. It was like, I can't believe. Funny. Wait, what year were you born again? 2000, year before. Fuck. Which, But that leaves open the possibility that well, they're just so like, little. fuck this kid. Yeah. <laughs> we're ruining his birthday. My roommate, well, because they couldn't, yeah, they couldn't have done it the day of. It's too much planning. Yeah, they wouldn't have known So for when you sure. were born, they had to have a year like, to right, figure it out. It's, yeah, exactly. I bet we have like, maybe, maybe not. Was, if there's one person out there, if you were born on, actually, it doesn't have to be 2001. If you were born on September 11th, send us a DM. Dude, I have so a no, no, no. This is crazy. So there was a tweet that so went viral. There's two people in this office. It's the on funniest. There was a tweet that went viral a few like ten years ago, and at, in the about like 9/11 birthdays, and in the replies, like someone was like, 
message me if you have an island birthday we'll make a group me so there's a group me of like a hundred of us <laughs> and no one says anything in it except once a year it's like happy birthday and everyone just says happy birthday once a year every year that's Aww. awesome yeah it's, in, it's still to this day that's wholesome yeah it is also my roommate senior year of college his birthday is january 6th that's not as bad. I think 9-11 it's is funny. a little worse. Yeah. I mean, both, we both, were... fal- both false flag attacks. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's, true. that's true. What a coincidence. <laughs> mm. um, yep. uh, 9-11. Cole's Col- Col- got something cooking. Col- Col- <laughs> Col- <laughs> is rolling, you can see when those fingers start going. Wait, Cole has been gone for a week and a yeah. couple Dude, days. You've been and gone he still for doesn't like have three content weeks. to speak about. I, was, I, I left Sleeping for a week. Bed. You've been gone forever and I got really sad and really lonely. I started tearing up all the furniture, screaming at my girlfriend. <laughs> and I didn't even know why. Digging through the trash, looking for your pills. and like, Yeah. Like, honey. Uh, it, dude, it was so nice to not be on my phone. You text me a few times. I don't even think I read them. I felt every time I texted you, I was like, ah, this Same. can probably wait, but I should just send it. Same. I I was the worst to Joe about it. <laughs> Joe would text me, I just like, like it or something. I don't know. But uh, Where were you, Boston? I was in Cape Cod. Oh, okay. uh, I was on a kayak. <laughs> I love moving it. around. Paddling. Paddling. I had uh, nothing of note happen to me, but I did have a super embarrassing thing happen. That It was such a, a great week, relaxing week, and this one moment ruined the entire week for me that's yeah let's hear it uh i was with my father my younger brother my younger brother's girlfriend and my girlfriend we were on the beach and uh i had i had a few drinks i was smoking a little pot okay so i was feeling i was sitting down also just in the sun and uh i stood up to go use the paddle board and uh it's me and my my lady were in the water, and I was like, I heard from, I was just like pushing the paddleboard out. I just wanted to like sit on it and chill on it. I was not going to stand up on it because I was like, I think I'm a little bit too fucked up to get up on this thing. And then I hear my dad from behind me on the shore, like whispering to my brother, like he can't fucking get up on that right now. There's no <laughs> way, like he can't do it. And I heard him talking shit, and I was like, now I have to. And I get up, dude, and it was the longest fall. Like I, I stood for like two seconds. And by the way, there's other people around us watching, and it's not deep water. It's about. A, a foot and a half of water and i'm doing like the leg wobble oh yeah where you like or like i'm, I'm like log <laughs> on it. and then i fall so fucking hard and i laid underwater for 30 seconds and i just thought about just <gasps> just really letting let a bunch of that ocean water in. get in there and yeah. ruin it and uh i actually i was like this I, I couldn't look at anyone for. Did like, you stay in the <laughs> ocean until you stopped crying so that it looked like? I spent as much time underwater as I could. I would like <laughs> be like, <gasps> and I'd just like swim out and I'd stay underwater. And I'd be like, it's I, like when you were a kid, <laughs> you wanted your parents to worry if yeah. they were mad at you. Yeah. Think, yeah, he's under for so long. I stayed underwater until I was positive that nobody on shore could be looking in my direction again, and I. You wanted to scare him. I did. I was like, hopefully a boat comes by and hits me. Um, <laughs> that's it. That's the only thing that happened to me. There were sharks out there. There was a I lot. I was looking was at the app. The app. Yeah, there's a shark like app? shark what is the app? app. It was there was sharks hanging around like P Town. What's the app called? You would know, wouldn't shark, you? Sharko meter. You would, My you dad would, has. You would know. Fun. You would know so much about P Town, probably. Dude, I used to get when I had the mullet. People, I was a waiter at a restaurant in Boston. People would all the time. Be like, you would be that would be all the rage in P Town. <laughs> I'd have guys talking that all the time. <laughs> Was P Town uh, Province Town? It's the tip of Cape Cod. Yeah, it's tip of Massachusetts on a little boot, but it's uh, mm. it's Boys Town. Yeah, it's like uh, Disney World for the gays. Whoa, the gay fellows. Whoa, can't say that. I've never been. I want to go and just like. I think it's. I've heard it's a lot of fun. Yeah, an entire gay city. Yeah, it's probably the most fun there's ever yeah. been. Imagine going to a bar and it's just like 19 hot guys hanging out. Yeah. Liam, you must be feeling... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, speaking of that, you must be feeling some type of way today with those shorts on. You said you'd never show your legs on this podcast. Um, yeah, but I already have. Okay. Ah, oh, fuck. It is kind of the only time I've ever felt the need to I like, see it now. do this. <laughs> now I get it. Why you didn't want to... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, what were you saying, Will? Willie, the Willie. camera staring down your crotch makes you want to cross your legs. Is all I'm, I'm telling Emily that we got to fix this. this is the ho- is horrible. Every okay. time I look at it, I'm looking like well. Every when I do own. raise it, then it gets in the way of the TV. People want to see the bulge. What's the TV for? I don't have one. We we sometimes no, show. Every do you episode. not? I've never watched podcasts. I watch every podcast. My 
I watched every episode you did of your podcast before you even started your TikTok. Did you? Yeah. What's it called? Drainstorm. <laughs> That's true. Wow, you're a horrible did friend. Did you really? really? Yeah. No, you did not listen to that. There's totally. no way. How would I have known that then? Because I told you, we talked about it like two weeks ago. No, you were drunk. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> he got you're, me. You're, you're making up false memories. <laughs> What's dra- What the fuck is Drainstorm? Drainstorm was a podcast I made in college. Self-produced. I bought like actual like audio recording equipment and like a mixer and. That's Can you produce this pod? No, I wouldn't want that job. (laughs) I don't envy your job. No, why would? Oh, (laughs) don't say that to someone. I could never do your job. I hate. (laughs) God, your job sounds horrible. I love you, but starting a podcast in college is the lamest thing of all time. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's the only reason I'm here right now because it was that that made us start doing the TikToks. So. Uh. What'd you guys talk about on Drainstorm? <laughs> oh, it, was, it was fun. It was like pitching like business ideas. I think it's a great idea. Like Tinder every for episode, dogs. Every episode I thought was hilarious. What was your favorite episode? The oh man, it's you, a, were just, you were just uh, honestly, honestly, one. the first episode you guys did, you came storming out of the gates. Mm. So I thought it was money. Drainstorming. Oh man! Whoa! <laughs> I've been teasing you a lot. I'm sorry. I forgive you. Dude, we're just razzing you. You're just Dude, razzing. happy you're we're back. We're fucking was, with you. I was sleeping in your bed while you were gone. How was that? Did you find any cool knickknacks in my it's room? It's hot. Yeah, I don't know. I, did too. you wash your sheets? Uh, yeah. Because I sweated in there a lot. Well, there was... You were lying on some of my stuff as well. What do you mean? Oh, your sweat? Yeah. Do you, yeah. you don't have AC, I guess. It was really you don't have AC at all? Mm. No. That sucks. Just I have Jason come fan me. He wears a leaf bikini bottom, and uh, I make him wax his chest hairs, and he uh, he fans me with a big leaf. Yeah, he feeds me grapes. That's nice. It is. Nice. It is nice. That is good. So you guys got nothing else to talk about today? Are you kidding? I had that sick. Oh, I had something story. We had nine funny. the nine eleven stuff. I had something uh, yeah. this morning. I was walking down Abbot Kinney, and I. Uh, was trying to think of things for this, like mm-hmm. characters or whatever. And I thought of like a name or something that made me laugh. And so I like laughed to myself, but there was a guy right on the street, like facing the road. And he turned and saw me because like I laughed. So he turned and looked right mm-hmm. at me. And I panicked because I didn't have like, there would no, be no reason to be laughing in that context. So I just, he was on the left side of me and I went, that's hysterical. All right, I'll call you back, man. And just walked <laughs> by. <him. laughs> it was great. That's that's a good move. I've done that before. I've definitely I'm like, done that before. I'm like walking into a show and I'm like trying to like list things I'm going to talk about and think on the show, and then I like a woman passes <laughs> me and I'm like, "All right, all right, Todd, <laughs> all right, dude." Um, I thought it was funny too because I did. I acted like I had like one of those like old timey Bluetooths, like <laughs> like it was just in my one ear. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I was trying to sneak into this party this past weekend. Um, You're Emily Binder. Why don't you say, you knock on the door and you say, let me in here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it was like an influencer party. Um, so I was like trying to get into this party and there was a list. So Whose I pret- party was it? None of your business. <laughs> <laughs> so I was trying, I, I pretended I was on the phone. I go, I'm going to comment. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I pretended I was on the phone and I just go, hi, yeah, yeah. No, I just went home to change really quick and, um, I'm coming right back in. Don't worry. Don't worry. I go, hi. Oh, my name's Emily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right there. Right there. Thanks. Okay, I'm, I'm coming back in. I'm coming back in. And then I walked right in. I would do that at Mavs games, like, <gasps> before the Mavs were good with Luca, when, like, all the, the bowl seats at the bottom were open. And I would go up to the thing, and I'd be like, yeah, I see you. Yeah, do you have our tickets? Hey. Right here. And I would just <laughs> wave, and I'd be like, all right, I'm coming down. And then I put my phone down. And they'd be like, can I see your ticket? And I'd be like, oh, my buddy has him. And they go, he's got to come up here. And I was like, uh, you know what? I'm going to run to the bathroom. <laughs> so you didn't get in? Yeah. It worked Not- once, but I tried it two or three other times. And it was so, it's so embarrassing. I stopped trying it. But yeah. the worst is when they can actually see your phone and that you're like actually not on the phone. So I made sure to call my friend during the, like when I was trying to get at this party and I was like, you don't have to say anything on the other end. I just needed to look like I'm on the phone. Did anything else happen to you while I was gone? Um, probably not. Cool. Um, so you're homeless. <laughs> I am homeless. You yeah. slept here last night. I, I did. I slept. You slept 
I here? You're too, office, you're too smart to graduate with the Where? degree. Where? No. That's get the, the real smart move. I'm not paying anything for rent. True. Where, Where are you? Where'd you sleep? Yeah. Political science. Uh, I slept on the couch in the sketch wing. You're, I feel like that's a violation of some sort. Yeah. Well, he was I didn't off. even tell you about the part that was a violation. Yeah, he, j- was the he jacked off before he fell asleep here. That's I, no, so no, upsetting. No, I did not I touch. No, well, how you, I did not jack off. How are you supposed to fall asleep without jacking onto your own tummy? <laughs> you gonna blame the guy? No. It's like a, my body has it an instinct. If my nice. belly button isn't at least teeming with cum, Ew. I'm staying up. I'm staying Whoa. up for a while. I could operate heavy machinery for a few hours. And you were telling me that you were like edging and sitting in people's chairs around the office, and then you finished. Where'd you finish? I call it. I call it the double edge when you do it down there. Oh, you 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 finished in Edge's office. It, we just edged in. Yeah, no, I didn't. I di- I didn't. So I said there is a violation. You said, oh, I didn't even tell you the violation. What is the? What do you? I was doing a joke. So you know how you guys do the little bits? Nope. <laughs> we don't do bits around here. <laughs> yeah, no, I slept. I slept in. I did sleep on the couch though in the in the office. Yeah. Honestly, it was great. He there's all, a, there's so snacks. when when are you moving somewhere? You don't have a place yet. I can't talk about this be on the podcast right now. I got a lot going on. I'm be on, to figure out. Be honest with me. September 1st. I know you didn't jack off in the office, but at what point did you stop Cons- the inner dialogue and say, okay, I'm not going to do it? I know you had one. When Max Barrett came down the stairs, apparently he was directly above me the whole time. I had He's no always idea. up there. What time? 10.30. I was asleep. So I guess that's not the answer to your question. But that was a de- decisive like, oh shit, this is kind of weird. Did you have like a blanket? Yeah, there's a Domino's no, branded no, blanket. No. Yeah. yeah, it yeah, was. It yeah, was Domino's. Yeah, yeah. I love the Domino's. Best fucking we had a little I fucking Caesar's love blanket Domino's. too. I love Domino's. Which is great. Yeah. So. Um, how long have we been going? <laughs> <laughs> Taking a quick break to talk about our next partner, AG1, the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health. I drink it literally every day. It's part of my morning routine. I have my AG1 on my empty stomach. Then I have my coffee. Then I'm ready to take on the day. Okay? It makes me feel invincible. It makes me... I feel like if a cop tased me, I wouldn't even feel it if I was drinking my AG1. It does make me feel like I'm a superhuman. I like to drink it before I go work out. And I work out long enough. You don't even need to work out on AG1, probably. If you stare. I, that's not scientifically proven, but you just have to stare into the sun for six hours a day. I drink AG1 and I flex every like a chimpanzee. I engage all my muscles at once. And do uh, they do that? They grow. Uh, chimpanzees can only engage all their muscles at once. They can't. Is that real? Yeah. That seems. They exhausting. can't do individual ones. Nope. If they engage their legs, they have to engage every muscle in their body. That's why, like, their grip strength is like, they can't like, you know what I mean. Like they can't like use they can't, like, like like a little hard every time too. Yeah, I bet they do. I well, bet. anyway, every scoop of AG One is packed with seventy five vitamins, minerals, and probiotics. Oh my god, you can't even count them. There's so many, and they got whole food source ingredients. It's high quality, guys. Okay, if you want to take ownership in your health, try AG One and get a free one year supply of vitamin D and five free AG One travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash almost friday that's drinkag1.com slash almost friday check it out your gut will thank you your body will praise you and getting back into the episode i was wondering if we should do characters or not yeah let's do some okay i got a good character Okay. Are you excited? I I mean, this is this is Well, he's got the, great characters. This is what pays the bills right here from what I hear. All right, this is uh this is Cordial Bug Bubble. Woo! Is that off the dome right there? Yeah. That's like off that. the top. Okay, so you guys are at a funeral, okay, for your papa. Okay. We're brother. And I'm I'm like the the guy that works there that's just kind of making sure everything's going well. There's a big photo of your dad. You know, with little signs and everything neck at the front, okay? And you're giving a eulogy. Uh, my father was a respected businessman. He was also a loving husband, brother, and friend. Holy fuck. Is, there, is your dad Vin Diesel? That looks exactly like Vin Diesel. The photo... Holy fuck. Well, just, he's... he's Sorry. That's insane. That's... 
<clears throat> Sorry, continue. Um, my father was a man of like. Hey many- Siri, pull up photos of Vin Diesel. It's. Can you stop it? Here are he some lost images his- of Vin Diesel from the web. Have a look. No, it's not Vin Diesel. What's his fucking name? Fuck! He's from that movie with Nick Cage. Fuck. Sorry, go on. My father. I'm um, sorry. Um, can I see that? Can I see that again? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um. <laughs> you can't. No. No. no, no you can't. No, no, no. You can't. <laughs> my father was. A man of few words, but he always led through his actions, and um, I think I think that's something we could all strive to be. Fuck, you know what? It's from the Crudes. It's the movie. He's <laughs> he's, a, he's a voice actor in it. What am I thinking of? <laughs> Chris Sanders. He plays Belt. That's who it is. <laughs> I'm sitting here going, I'm sitting here going, oh shit, I didn't know that fucking guy died from the crudes. My father wasn't a voice actor in the, the crudes movie. I know, I just said that. I just said I was confused. Holy shit. You gotta give this place five stars on Yelp. This is my dad's business. <laughs> I'm going to miss my dad. I think we all are. Um, I think he would be proud to see he the didn't turnout do any, today. He didn't do any voice work. <laughs> no, he, no, no, one, no, he didn't. Is he was, no one else seeing he was, this? He was Am in, I crazy? This is insane. He, he was a By the way, there's man. another funeral in like 10 minutes, so you got to <laughs> speed this puppy up. Because I don't know how... That guy's got to be in the ground in six minutes, and we're not even close. What's his name? My father's name is John. Ah, I thought I tricked you. I thought it was the guy from the Croods. <laughs> <laughs> and you were trying to trick me. All right. You win. Okay, that's... That was, that's, so that's good. Cordial, that was awesome. Cordial bug bubble. That was, that was so good. <laughs> The Croods. That's a fun one. I, could, I thought yeah. we were sticking with the Vin Diesel the angle, and then say, the Croods. Yeah. I had I was like lining up like a Vin Diesel bit, and then you said the Croods. And just that was that took was, me right out of it. That was so good. What was the name again? I think it was Cordial Bug Bubble. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Something like that. I tried to sneak. You got his notebook. I saw. I didn't. I can't, almost fell for it too. Yeah. I saw the look on his face. Like <laughs> you can't read my dream journal. You're up. You're up, fucking kid. I'm up. What's up, youngin? Okay. Young how, how old are you? Twenty three. 22. When's your birthday? When it's 20? funny because oh, yeah. I guess by younger. <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was genuine. That was genuine. All right. Are you guys ready? Will was about yeah. to say something. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. I just... Doesn't matter. I got your back, dude. What? I got your back. Oh, thanks, son. You want to speak? You can speak. Oh. You guys are good. All right. Um, <sighs> Liam, you're Brumble Punch. <laughs> you're good. And Will, you are his date, Rob Hospital. Ooh, Rob Hospital. Wait, is Strong. Brumble a girl? <laughs> is that I'm it... not gonna be gay in this. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not. Pick gonna a girl name. Yeah. All right, it's Brumble's a girl. I know okay. you, you and all your P-town friends all right. probably want us to be gay. Your Brumble punch. I'm picturing you naked. All right, Liam's. <laughs> Liam, <laughs> can, can I say something real quick? Yeah, sure. I always love when it's like a, a homophobic dad in a movie, and he's like talking to his clearly gay son. He's like, "What are you and your friends doing later?" <laughs> 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 Anyways, continue. Okay, your Brumble punch. And you are on a date with Rob Hospital, and you're at a country music concert with Grammy Award winning singer Francis De La Guitar. <laughs> okay. okay? And I'm, I'm performing. Cool. It's such a romantic song. I know. Just, I yeah. love him. Hey, uh, before I get into this last chorus, y'all, I just wanted to shout out the, uh, the person that gave me the, the words to sing this song. Uh, it's my good friend, Brumble Punch. So uh, just know when you hear this song, it's actually about a Brumble, uh, a story that Brumble told me about That's so cool. um, her, you know, experience. So so cool. <laughs> Put the spotlight on Brumble. Everyone look at Brumble. This is all about oh Brumble. Oh my, my God. All right. <laughs> okay. This is insane. I know. 
I'm doing yep. foreskin stuff with my hometown friends Making skin flap love like this night won't end I used to hide and now I can't pretend I'm doing foreskin stuff with my hometown friends <laughs> Shout out Brumble Punch everybody Thank you Brumble That is about your life That is something you did <laughs> <laughs> ah, That was great Thank you Excellent work. That was great. Excellent. That was so fun. Thank you. Excellent work. What was your name? Francis De La Guitar? <laughs> Francis De La Guitar. God, that is a five-star name. I feel like that could work for like a music career. Yeah. Maybe Francois. Yeah. Oops. Oops. <laughs> yeah, you're not you're not there yet, kid. I'm getting there. You guys are doing so good. Speaking of live shows, we booked a date. What date? For an LA live show. A live podcast? Yeah. I'm not going to announce it yet until everything's settled, but... Can you tell us and bleep it? Fuck, I'm gone. You're not gone. That's big uh, for us. Uh, fuck. All right. Are you serious? No. Um. So everyone be on the lookout for that. Okay. For an LA live show, if you're in the LA area. How long or if on? you're not, fly in. Don't do It's worth it. No, it's not. All right, should I do my other character? Yeah. All right. Uh, it's the Revenge of the Sith. Okay. okay. You guys are battle droids on uh, Count Dooku's like, ship. This thing. is the best day Pretty of my sweet. life. This is the best day of my life. I will be both Obi-Wan Kenobi and R2-D2. Can you handle that? Well, uh, <laughs> I guess we're about to find out. Um, so you guys, so you know how we're like looking for Count Dooku? They had that whole thing with like the elevator. And then we're just like in this, like one of the rooms on that ship, and you guys kind of like spot us through the window. Mm -hmm. But what you're not engaging, you're just kind of yeah. like, yeah. You say something like, what's going on in there? All right. Ready? Why does he not have shoes on? It's part of it. It's part of it. I'm a Jedi. All right, ready? Yeah. And I'm holding a blaster rifle. Yes. Okay. Freeze, Jedi. Nope. No, we don't, we don't engage. You're just like, what, what, you're looking through a window at, down at a room that me and our right. are in. What the heck is going on in there? Looks like Jedi and a droid. R2. Good work in the elevator. Now come here and give me a kiss kiss. <laughs> Enough, R2. Come here and give me a kiss kiss. R2, just one kiss kiss, please. It looks like rebel droid R2-D2. Mm. His master, his, his apprentice, his, his master's... I wonder what they're plotting. R2. <laughs> R2, just like you did on Naboo, come give me a kiss kiss. Right now, R2. R2's, R2 saying he doesn't want to. What's going on down there? Obi-Wan has removed his robe. <laughs> R2, R2 sodomize me at once, R2. Um, oh, mm. oh. <laughs> ah. He's removing his circuit board from his posterior. R2, give me a kiss kiss. <laughs> R2, just one kiss kiss, please. Hmm. Should we tell Dooku? Should we alert the hold others? Hold on, hold on. I want to see this out. R2, that's enough. Come over here and give me a kiss kiss. You ever think we could do something like this? <laughs> it would be forbidden. <laughs> Two droids like us. The same. Count Dooku would not approve. What would my father say? You don't have one. I don't have one. I don't. I have one. R2. Get over here, you big lug. <laughs> that, I just wanted to say, R2, give me a kiss kiss. R2, uh, give me a kiss kiss. <laughs> I just wanted to say that. I feel like I got the Ewan McGregor, like... Yeah, that was great. Yeah, it was great. Like, R2, this elevator needs to be going up, <laughs> not down. Can you just, go in, a little exactly close, can you just go in a little closer for that kiss for the clip? Thank you. Yeah. Uh, that, was that was awesome. That was very Thank good, guys. I, you know what I realized about this? It's so hard to keep a straight face. I yeah. didn't think I would have an issue with that. But in both of my characters, I broke. I think know, people like, think that I'm like laughing on purpose. I'm not. This yeah. just, is, Liam's just so funny. Well, it's also funny in, it's funnier to do bits in a setting where it's like a quiet room. And you know what I mean? Hey, Liam, we were uh, editing some clips the other day and we are just sitting there like this. <sighs> I hate when I laugh, but Liam's just so funny. It is true. I said yeah. that. I love when you laugh, man. 
I was bummed out that you guys broke me both times. Yeah, you know. We're going to break Comedic genius, Willie Donnellan. Tough to break. <laughs> You're such a piece of shit. <laughs> Give me like, a hard time, This man. is the first time I've seen this guy in a year, and he just comes guns a-blazing. I'm breaking... You uh, knew you were walking into this. Oh, though. my God. The, you walking into the bus. I mean, hanging out ah. with you two, I'm going to get a little bit of flack. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can take it, dude. You dish it. I can take it, bro. I can dish. I can take... You can dish you can take. Can You're a smart it. cat. So what's your plan for the... What's the What's the rest of your day look like? He's here? womanizing chicks. I know that. I'm womanizing chicks. You want to talk about guys that... Guys that... Uh, just freaking... Like, guys that are just, like, covered in chicks' pussies? I don't feel comfortable <laughs> anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. Hey, uh... uh, uh hey, is there hey, any... Hey, hey, Willie. <laughs> right? right? Yeah. That was Emily. Cool. I walk. I walk. I walk in voice there. Okay. I freaking walked into the pussy store this weekend. They're like, you, "You just sorry, we're out of stock." Willie Danella just came through and bought up all the fucking freaking. That pussies. can't be true. Yep. Brought up every freaking uh, a pussy store. A, That's bottle, preposterous. Bottle, bottle of fucking bottle of fucking freaking uh, pussies. But uh, Willie Danella just came here and bought all of her pussies. And I said, "I said, sir, when are you going to restock?" He said, "I don't know. I'm on opiates." <laughs> Yeah, that guy's a hoot and a half, huh? Yeah, I'm going surfing. Yeah, f- yeah, of course. During you while we're working, you're going work. surfing. No. Have you? Sorry. Yeah, go. No, please. Have you guys heard about? Have you guys seen a picture of Ariana Grande's new boyfriend? Yeah, yeah SpongeBob squid. guy. Yeah, she's a new one. Yeah, he, he broke up he with her divorced, fiance, and then he divorced his wife after. Oh, I would actually think they got married. I think she was a wife also, so they got divorced, and so did. Hmm. Yeah, they both got divorced to be together, and then she's going to leave him. And she's now giving him space so he can figure out his divorce before they just start dating. Imagine, though. And they just had a kid. Imagine. I looked at that picture the of this new- guy. And he looks... Ju- Did you see the comparison to his brother? To her? Can you uh, put a picture of him on the thing? I really no, want to see this know. thing. To Ariana Grande's brother? Grande. Yeah. But, dude, imagine you're an ugly theater kid your whole life, married oh. to an ugly theater girl, and then Ariana Grande's like, do you want head? What are you going to say? Probably no. Yeah. I doubt it, dude. I mean, I think... I fucking... Who's Frankie Grande? Her brother. Her brother. And look at this comparison, this side-by-side comparison. (gasps) Which one is the guy? So Frankie Grande is the blonde one, and the one she's She's getting divorced for... The guy on the right. This is the guy from the... The, That movie. What is it? He looks like a... Goonies or whatever, where he comes out and he's like... It kind of looks like uh, like a young Edward Scissorhands. There's got to be a better picture. Can you just Google Ethan yeah, Slater? Yeah, there's got to be yeah. some. Wait, wait, wait. Like, that that one down there. It feels like they're intentional. Every, yeah, every company is going to use a horrible photo Jesus of him. Jesus Christ. Did kinda you see the video of him doing Spongebob Live? Oh, please. Dude, pull this it guy up. is like, he's just, he looks like me. <laughs> 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 I'm talking a lot of smack, but shit. He kind of does. <laughs> he does look like you. <laughs> Fuck, dude. We all shadow him. Fuck. <laughs> Nobody tell me that. Nobody say that. Everybody disagree with me. Oh, you want to know what's really sad? Say he doesn't, dude. You want to know doesn't. what's really sad? I was thinking it before you said it. God. I'm sorry. Fuck. Definitely fighting with his ex-wife about, about about destroying the family they've built. Like setting it on fire and and walking away. Do you think this guy's a good father? He could be. I don't know. No. Bad husband. Nope. <laughs> you can't raise a child and do that, dude. <laughs> I don't care what you say. That's true. Call me what you it's want. Like the kid, he'd be great with kids. Look at that guy, dude. What I was, was going to say, I'm actually with Willie D. I feel like he probably is a good like dad. The father but, is like the but one thing I wouldn't work. Maybe kidding, maybe worst husband of all time. Yeah. He, I mean, he's a Goosebumps character. He's the doll from Goosebumps. That's what he was saying. Oh, that's what you said? You just kind of ignored him and walked over him. <laughs> Well, we were all saying he looked like Liam, so... He looks like the guy from Boston PD. Fuck. On that, meth. That sketch? He actually does look like you if you had a bad... If you were addicted to Adderall. Like, if you had to take, like, 100 milligrams a day to if. function. <laughs> Just Josh. Uh, He's shorter than you. Dude, now I, I gotta go back and I'm gonna cut all the mean things I said about him because everyone's gonna roast me on the internet. Oh, Fuck. Oh fuck! Do you think I mean, anyone cares this is a about win? No, no, no one's gonna roast you. No Wait, one cares everyone's about roasting him. This is a win no, no, for guys not, who look like that, though. So you, I mean, you should be excited. That no, but it's some fu- it's some fucked up in her head. He doesn't look that bad here. Why do you think she does this? Because there was like a terrorist attack at her concert. 
Well, do you know she's like known for stealing people's like <laughs> boyfriends? Like this is a trend in her life. Who else? Nobody thought that was she fucking stole that was awesome. Pete Davidson's ex. She stole. She stole Pete Davidson's ex. No, or, she... no, no. She stole Pete Davidson from his ex. She stole. Uh, who else? From... She like, fucked up Mac life. Miller. Right. Whoa. She fucked him up. Yes. I blame Ariana Grande for Mac Miller's death. That's what I thought he was saying. <laughs> I didn't say that. I'm saying it. I said that I'm, I'm not afraid. Uh, he was like uh, destroyed <laughs> about it. I really couldn't. Care I don't less. know. I don't know if he was he about was who Ariana Grande. Oh, I couldn't either. But I think he, just the way he looks is funny. Yeah. Look up at Ariana Grande. Why? She's been looking off lately, though. I will say every picture you see is going to be the worst photo you've ever seen. Because they want to paint her in a bad she literally light. Looks fantastic. No, look at her. She's gorgeous. I got to be honest, I don't get the hype around her. Taking a quick break to talk about Tushy. Liam, do you get spicy poops? Yeah. Yeah, I do. How spicy does it feel like a bucket of nails yeah. is pouring out your guts down into the... Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Okay, well, Liam, don't be so upset. There's a solution. I got my Tushy, and now, not only do I go through less toilet paper, I feel clean and I feel ready to take on my day. I don't feel like I have human feces still on my body because that's realistically that's what's happening when you don't use a bidet. You're gonna miss spots. You're gonna I be just, a dirty boy. Fuck, dude. Now I feel gross. I just pooped. Yeah, you are disgusting. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest. I can smell poop on you at all times. Yeah, with it's tushy. stuck to my clothes. Yeah. Well, that's because uh, you wipe with your pants. You put them back on. That is a good point. Well. The Hello Tushy Bidet cleans your bum with a fresh stream of water that is two times better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing. I didn't know that. That's awesome. It is. And cuts toilet paper use by 80%. Damn. A Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself in under a year. I believe you. Will stop wiping and start washing. Well, you know what's great is no one likes to have to Take a shower and dry off with the towel they just wiped with. And then you got to throw it in the wash and uh, you wash them all the other clothes got poop all over them. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of real pooping humans already love the Hello Tushy Bidet. Every Hello Tushy Bidet attachment comes with a 30-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. That's insane. We use ours. It's amazing. Go to... HelloTushy.com forward slash almost Friday and use promo code almost Friday for 10% off your first order. That's HelloTushy.com slash almost Friday for 10% off. Come on. Let's get back into the episode. They found a body in a barrel in Malibu. When did this happen? Like two days ago. They found it. They found the body. Okay, is there a follow up? There's a man in the, in, the, in the barrel and they. What kind of man? I'm looking this up. True crime podcast. Body found in plastic barrel floating in water at Malibu Beach. First quote, this is not what happens in Malibu. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good tagline. <laughs> Apparently it is. Yeah. My question is, you know, if you're going to throw a guy in the ocean, why would you preserve his body in a barrel? Why wouldn't you just tie a couple of rocks to his anks? In case you need to go back. No, it's to get him to the ocean. Well, no, it's in case you want to give him one more kiss. If you regret <laughs> for getting rid of him already. Kiss, True. kiss. Ugh. All right, can we get Ariana Grande off the screen? Yeah, because Rick, that. Rick is uh, sending me scissor lift photos right now. For what do we? What do we need a scissor, scissor what lift? What is that? a sign outside. It's, you know those things that like f- high school football games. You'll see a guy up there. Mm-hmm. He was more of a theater guy, not a football guy. It's true. Yeah. What'd you do? Yeah. What were, what were you like in high school? Theater? We didn't have theater at my high school. What'd you what? do in high school? I went. You're to a track the, kid, I went right? to the number one in public high school in America. How many black students were there? 17. Out of? 700. Oh, man. And so Charleston's what are you, what about are you, half black. What are you saying? It's super fucked wait, up. Wait, wait, what are you saying? If you want you want to hear my honest what rant the about fuck? the discriminatory admissions process, yeah, it's probably what, dude, not. Dude, what the fuck did you just say? It's fucked up, dude. It was fucked up? Actually, though, when you were at this high school and mm-hmm. you were in the leader of the, you know, ROTC. No, we did, yeah, I was a uh, captain of the golf team. And were you really? Yeah. I didn't know you golfed. I'm not good at it. We, You're the we weren't going to have a golf team, and I was friends with the coach. He was like my history teacher, so I was like, can we do it? And he was like, sure. So we were all terrible. We never won a single match in two years of maybe on the golf team. But one of the kids on the team, his dad was like, owned all the Taco Bells in South Carolina. <laughs> and so we got like all these coupons. So we just, we get to leave class, school early for practice, and we just go 
play a little golf and then eat Taco Bell. It, was it awesome. sounds phenomenal. It was the best time of my life. I got to play on like all the like I played like the Ocean Course, which is like where they play the PGA Championship, and like that's sick. Charleston Country Club. They've just played like the Women's U.S. Open there, and I got eaten alive by every one of them. But it was beautiful. Can you open to a random page in your notebook and read it? Come on, come on, dude. We're drowning here. Sometimes I would just write out like lyrics to songs I already liked. <clears throat> so Why? Could you write start singing one of yours, please? Mental exercise. Uh, no, I'm not really comfortable sharing. Um, that's too bad. We have peer pressure on this podcast. I'm not getting peer pressure. I, I mean, I, I haven't even put like tune to these. It's just where they're poems, effectively. <sighs> God. Why do we have? Why do we have this kid on? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this one says go to therapy, which I should have scratched out. Where yeah, does it say that? Therapy ruined your life. Yeah, that says counseling. What? Why'd you change it? You had a big bruise. Because we hadn't been using that word. I thought you guys were going to have like prompts for things. Yeah, what, uh, what's, the, what's the... I thought you watched the podcast. I have never watched the podcast. Oh, oh, don't say that. Nor have I claimed to. Um, yeah, you have. Like... A, you called in. He fast forwards and tries to see if we bring him up on every episode. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Have you done That's that? That's what Rusty does too. No, I just did, I I listened to my appearance on the when I called in that one time. Just well, you 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 know you're a backfill for this episode, right? I know we're supposed to be we're rusty. supposed to be Rusty. Thank God that TBT team won. Shout out Julian Gamble. What about Corge Futch? Corge Futch, how's he doing? How's my guy doing? Taurus. I really don't watch like watching Willie D play with his toes. Is this on the camera? Well, we got we need something to, for we people it, to look at. Willie D, how old were you when you lost your virginity? Six. Seventeen? Seventeen? Eighteen? And how, how old was uh the lady? <laughs> Forty five. No, same age. Dude, you're a riot. <laughs> 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 this is like I feel like you guys are setting me up to come off as like uninteresting. Yeah, but you didn't give me any preface for what. Um, inter- sorry, why don't you come with your own material? No one sorry. told me to. Co- I didn't know until last night that I was even doing this, and you, I came up with Brumley Chud or whatever the fuck I said earlier. I don't know. if I've already said this. Did you know that this was supposed to be Rusty's episode? Yeah, you did. So ask me the question. Ask me about how many beers I can drink. Whoa, 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 whoa! whoa. You me? That's mean. Wow. Wait till Rusty fucking <laughs> scrolls through and hears this little segment. He's not. He's not scrolling through. We're keeping that. He's in mid You're going to have to. Remember when you guys did your little tiff last year? Yeah, I fucking hated him for like a month. I know. You guys were and both now you guys... so mean to me for no reason. But No, he, no he had, dude, you're a geek. No, you... I got to give him credit. He had the nicest, like most genuine apology I think I've ever received. Yeah, now you guys are best buds. Yeah, we're. I, Wait, I, who? You and Rusty? Yeah, when we lived together last year. You were beefing? Yeah. It wasn't even beef. I had nothing against him. He just started like. He yeah. would just come after me. You guys saw it. was weird. It was yeah, he like, didn't like you. He just like decided he didn't like me. It was just like it was like a middle school level. Like he probably thought you shut were... up, nerd. <laughs> like I was like, what? Is, how old are we? And uh, well, he probably thought you were fake. I guess, but and then, then he found out you were genuine. Like, he came to me like last like September. I was just like, hey man, I'm really sorry. And like he just said all the right things. I was like, all right, we're totally good then. So oh. did you apologize to him? I didn't for think being that. a geek. I didn't and for setting him off. Yeah, I should have been like, I'm sorry I was being such a geek. I'm sorry. You I'm up. sorry the way I I'm am. I'm sorry I was like just being around you and being such a dweeb <laughs> all the time. I'm sorry. <sighs> Dude. But we were sharing a bedroom. I think that's tough, so. Willie, this episode sucks. Do you want me to like come up with a story? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, no, all I right. What's that crazy story you were telling us about? Oh, the yeah. one with the shark. <laughs> <laughs> we already talked about sharks. Or the oh no, it was the. F- I don't even know. I got. It think. was the. Like, there has to be something. It was the Smithsonian. This. What'd you do after? What'd you do? Uh... <laughs> Remember, you stole that ancient tablet. <laughs> oh, you want? Oh, here's a funny story. All right, I got one. I thought of something funny that happened. The I the worst grade that I ever got in my college career was this past semester, and it's because I had this like real like progressive type philosophy professor it's like a class of like all freshmen i just needed for like a core requirement and it was like at the end you fill out like a self-evaluation of like how what grade you thought you deserved for the semester and i put like a really low grade because i was like i don't i don't want him to like think that i'm like arrogant and then he just gave me exactly what i put what did you put worst grade ever well it was a c plus or c minus or something yeah 
You're an idiot. Yeah, I think you're a dumb. It's crazy. Yeah, I was like, I was like, I don't want him to think that I was such a great student because I knew I hadn't been the best student. So I thought he would respect me being like honest. And then he'd give you an A plus. And, and yeah, like I just thought he'd give me something higher than a C. I think it was a C minus. I just put C minus, and then I just showed him my report card. I was like, no one to blame but myself for that one. But did you ever get caught cheating? Brought my GPA down. Never got caught. No. What are you doing? In uh, middle school. You did? Uh, what happened? Uh, I gave someone an answer, and I got reprimanded the same punishment as them, which, which I think is kind of bullshit. Which was big wedgie. Ooh. It was big wedgie. Oh, my God. I remember. Stung. It was a crossword puzzle. I actually remember this. Was, and we were like, how the fuck? It was a homework. How do you cheat on a it crossword was, It was a, a homework assignment. It was like a crossword puzzle about the Bible for my religion class. It was a Catholic school. And oh, I gave yeah. someone an answer, and they were like, that they knew it. They, they I didn't know you went to Catholic school, too. I could tell. Catholic you give too. off Catholic school vibes. For two years. I thought you went to a public school, though. Public high school. Wow. Catholic middle school. I remember private. the kid next to me got caught cheating. We had these little trifold, like, privacy things where you would take a test, and it was the states and the capitals. And I remember the teacher leaned over. It was like It was like when George Bush gets told the tower got hit. And, like, she leaned over into his ear and said, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. and he folded his thing down. And she pulled these note cards out, and it literally felt like nine eleven. Like I knew what happened, and he was like my best friend, and I was like, "This human sack of shit! How could he ever do that?" Wait, what? What year was it? First grade, second grade. <laughs> and I, I remember thinking, like, "This fucker's going to hell." I'm never talking to this piece of shit again. <laughs> I remember we had in sixth grade, we were taking a vocab test, and this kid, uh, this kid, Mike was sitting next to me and all my friends and he just had his vocab book out on his lap and our teacher was just walking around and like he saw her coming but I don't know I couldn't get into his head maybe he just like froze in fear and he just sees her coming and like you could see him like try to move the book and his body like stopped him and she just goes Michael is that a vocab book? and he just looks up at her and goes like this <laughs> and she just takes it and he's just like okay um, I have to give you a zero and he was like yeah <laughs> and that was it. She was blown away by how just like confident he was of being. Yeah, I'm caught. <laughs> Hand up, the, you got me. There were these kids that um, uh, broke into our high school and went like on the computers to download the Spanish tests, and they uh, checked the security footage, and they knew who it was because one of the guys was like really fat. Oh, really? <laughs> they were like, "Hey, man." <laughs> it's so clear who it is. Do you, do you guys ever have... Uh... Expelled. All of them. Really? Expelled? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, guys. You know we're sponsored by the GOAT of sports betting, BetMGM. It's the best sports betting app in the world. Their odds are insane. They're ludicrous. They're absolutely wacky. Easiest to use. Got the, the coolest logo, in my opinion, as well. Uh, but... If you use promo code BEERS with BetMGM, you can get up to a $1,000 risk-free bet on your first bet. That's an insane deal. I don't know Willie how D's over here like, $1,000 risk-free? You must have read that wrong, Liam. I didn't. I'm like, there's no way that's so good. It can be I didn't, you fool. Freaking heck. BetMGM, it's the best, but you got to be 21 years of age or older. Willie D's like, I like them younger than that. Yeah, Willie D's like, get, if they ain't 12, I'm walking out the door. Willie, Willie D's friends can't use it. Uh, yeah. Uh, you got to be 21 years of age or older, and you got to be using it in a state where sports betting is legalized. Be responsible, guys. But if you do fall into a little bit of a gambling trouble, addiction-wise, there are resources available to you, but let's be responsible. Follow the rules and enjoy BetMGM. And enjoy that promo code BEERS. Let's get back in. So I had a crazy thing that happened this year where I was staying at my buddy's apartment. I mean, these, these kids I like kind of knew... Um, Craig and Damien. Craig and Febble. <laughs> Febble. I know Damien and Febble and Craig. And Anyway, this, these, the, are all, the rat pack. these are all aliases, but <laughs> it was... I don't even... Fuck. All right. Well, basically, someone came home from the bar drunk. It was April Fool's. <laughs> well, it was right after April Fool's. These guys have been going back with these like low-level pranks. Where you, <laughs> what are you even laughing at? <laughs> like the I'm just goofing. Oh, you're going. Okay, you're going they... One of these guys had put rice in the other's drawers as like a April Fool's prank. 
And then he had put... You guys are insane. And then he had taken all the rice and put it back in his drawer. Bro, your so friend then, group is him. So then that guy want, <laughs> wanted to get back at him. And so he was drunk when he got back from the bar. And he took his phone and put on his Snapchat story. I'm pledging myself to Allah and Muhammad. I'm going to bomb a state-sponsored building. And I have a gun. Which is... <laughs> that is the craziest <laughs> elevation. Zero to 100. Raising the stakes. No, dude, that's not zero to 100. That's zero to infinity. Yeah, so I, I didn't even... I was there, but I, it was in the other room. I was playing Catan. I, I had no idea. I was completely unaware. We go to bed, 5.30 in the morning, pounding on the door. My roommate like opens up. 20 armed Boston police officers. Boys in blue. Run into the room. And they're fucking screaming. They have like flashlights in our eyes. And they're like, where's Kregel? Where's Kregel? <laughs> Drabble. Where's, where's Kregel? This makes it sound like a not real story. Damien just, was probably like, just, oh, he's, <laughs> upstairs. <laughs> he's upstairs. Go get him. Everyone's like, Damien. Right he's like, where's Kregel? Where's Kregel? And uh, I, I was like, what? Like, uh, I don't know. Probably in his room. Like, I didn't know. And they were like, is he armed right now? Is what the cop asked me. And I was like, what? No. Why, why would Kregel be armed? And... And Craigle didn't even know what had happened to him either. Like, my friend had put it on his story. And uh, so the cops, like, stormed in, and they took Craigle in his bare feet. They didn't let him put shoes on, read him his Miranda rights, threw him in the Condom back. still on <laughs> with his friend group. No, his <laughs> naked girlfriend was in the bed, and they didn't naked. even, they, like... I love naked shit. Anyway, they they took him to the, they buried him his Miranda rights, took him to the police station, and then they were, like, his... The girlfriend was like, is this because of what Damien put on his Snapchat story? Because she knew about it, I guess. And the cops just turned and looked like, who the fuck is Damien? And I was like, he's in there. And so they go in and they, like... You said he's in there? Well, the, there's 20... Rat. Ar- rat. <laughs> rat. They were in the room. Rat. It was just part of the room. I didn't even know what had happened. Right. You said, oh, you're the police? He's in there. <laughs> yeah, I, I did. And he thought it was a joke. So they came out. I was like, Damien, you got to wake up. And he was like, shut the fuck up, I'm going to bed. I was like, no, the police are here. And it was, I mean, then they all took, they read him his Miranda rights and took him to the police station too. And it was the fucking. Then what? What ended up happening? Uh, they ended up getting like pretty, they got, they didn't, the police, it was the Boston police and they chose not to press charges and turn him over to the BC like administrative system. And they ended up getting. Now your buddy Krebel. Yes. He was fine, right? Krebel was fine, but they didn't know that. Like, he was the suspect. He was who they were after. Right, but it, nothing happened to him. No. He ended up getting off with nothing, but it was very strange. Well, I mean, that's what he gets for putting rice in his drawer. Yeah, exactly. That was the... <laughs> oh, that a, was actually the best part. When they were in, inter- interrogating Kregel, they were like... They were like... Or no, when they were interrogating... Talking to Damien, they were like, well... Uh, or no, sorry. When they were talking to Kregel, they were like, well, Damien did say you put rice in his drawers. Is that true? Like, the police officer... And Kregel is freaked out. He's like, that cannot be part of it. That doesn't count. Like, that is, <laughs> the moment that a terrorist threat is involved, that's off the books. Like, <laughs> uh, is there something I'm missing on the rice thing? Does that do something that I no, don't No, it was a prank war. Annoying. It was like, it was the escalation. How was annoying the, is that, though? I mean, you, have you tried to pick up rice? I would you, just, you can do one big scoop, but then you have to yeah. do like 10 little trips. Just take the drawer out and dump it outside. Okay, but now everyone's a freaking genius like you. That's true. It was, in all his, no, it was in his, all, all the individual sock balls. Oh, oh yeah. well then now okay well then yeah like what does he expect <laughs> yeah then you gotta you gotta threaten it was so bad you gotta threaten to be an Islamic were terrorist. you I would have started probably tearing up I went to the police station to try to get him out and then the cops ended up like interviewing me so I was like on all the police reports and stuff I would love to read these police reports there's was... gotta be something online about this right something online I'll google it no I think probably it, not I think they got away I mean all things considered it could have been a lot worse but did you tell your homeland security story on here Probably right. Oh, that's insane. Do you think that story was good? Uh, I don't know if we'll use it, but I was. It, I'm glad you got to share that. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, it was a great story. You like Are it? you kidding? Thank God, that was a lot of pressure, man. Willie D, thanks for coming on, thanks dude. Thanks for coming on. Dude. Do you have anything you want to plug? Like your handle or like anything cool like that? Like Friday your pod, is, brainstorm. This is called Let's Meet People. Oh, dude, that's awesome. What do you do? It's like. It's like this cool kind of innovative Dude, new so, thing where we that's interview awesome. people. On that's the really that's so sick. No, uh, yeah, you can follow me online. Hey, I know we had a lot of fun today. I know we, uh, we don't we, try to we, save face. We though. ribbed you. We ribbed you. you and, uh, I'm here. For, I'm here to be ribbed. But I love you. I'm happy you're back. I'm happy you're not uh, in Samoa. 
Yeah, I thought about I thought about going 180 doing the war core. What's that? Just kill start and shit. It was my own uh, thing. I was gonna. Oh, do. nice. I yeah, like that. Go back store. to Rwanda, get some like hotels and just like pit hotel Pick fights. Yeah, <laughs> that's what happened, right? Something <laughs> like that. Uh, seriously though, your giant help. We couldn't do this without you. So I'm very happy you're here. I was actually I was actually like, when you left, there was a hole in our in our little operation. There was a teeny tiny hole in my heart. The doctors had to put a tube in it. Well, I, to fix it. I will fill it all up. Fill me up, man. I had to have a pacemaker now because of you leaving. <laughs> I don't think that's a... Is that what a pacemaker does? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Read a book, buddy. All right, guys. That's Willie D. Do you have anything you want to plug? <laughs> no, I I mean... you have. And one right. thing we do really... This really cool that we do with our guests is they do all the ad reads. So we're going to head out if you want to knock these out. Yeah, would you mind? I'll do it. Okay. All right, later, guys. Later, guys. Thank See you. you.